Welcome to the Theater of Magic. Seven o'clock. Magic. Eight o'clock. Hocus Pocus. Nine o'clock. Packed Magic. Ten o'clock. Vanquish the chain. Eleven o'clock. You must break through. Midnight Madness. Tiger Song. <laughs> Mystifying. Unbelievable. Spectacular. The Theater awaits. G'day guys and welcome to the Theater of Magic. My name is Greg. Today uh, we will have a look at the APB machine which I have here in the theater because we haven't talked about it. And um, you know, there's only a couple machines here that I haven't really covered about what's in the theater. I thought today would be a good one to, to cover that off and have a look at the cabinet because it's, it's a bit of a strange one, this particular APB cabinet. And you can see I've got an APB running behind me on the, on the main box here. And that's because when I picked up my own APB cabinet, uh, it, it wasn't an APB. Okay, <laughs> like many of these games, it's been swapped out, um, and it's got Sega Rally in it. So, but I'll, I'll rewind a bit, I'll give you a little bit of the the backstory again with this particular cab because the first thing I had before this one was the Championship Sprint, and the Championship Sprint is. Uh, a system, Atari System 2 game, and so is APB, and in fact, I've got a list here, I've got to remember what they all are, but the the System 1 games, the Atari System 1 games, the Marble Madness, Road Blaster, Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom, Road Runner, and Peter or Pack Rat, they were all System 1 games, and the System 2 had the 720 Paperboy Championship Sprint, Super Sprint, and APB, and there was a couple of unreleased prototypes, the Accelerator and Gremlins. But all those games, except for um, Super Sprint, which was obviously the three three wheel version, really, of Championship Sprint, if you like, all of those had, um, even between the System One, and System Two, had uh, control panels that could be could be swapped. So. You know, given the limited space that I have in the in the theatre here, I thought you know this this is maybe a good opportunity to pick up a a a cab or a couple of cabs that are you know the system one, system two, and be able to interchange the control panels because I you know at one point I was really sort of you know thinking to try and get that arcade feel with a lot of these uh, machines. You know, you really need the, the the right controls, and especially for some of those particular games. In fact, you know things like. You know, 720 has has the um, and Paperboy has its own you know unique uh, controls and of course you know the steering wheels on Championship Spring and so forth. So they're very you know they're not they're not like just the joystick type controls, Marble Madness to trackball. So you know I thought this would be cool. You know, I can get myself a cool um, you know System One or System Two cabinet. In this case, they're both System Twos, and I can yeah swap out control panels, how cool would that be? And then, you know, maybe hook up a Jammer Pi, um, and then, you know, have it so that you could swap games and literally swap controllers quite easily without swapping the whole entire game. So that was the plan, that was the plan. So I originally saw this cabinet, again, one of those, one of those um, hidden opportunities, because this was advertised as a Sega Rally, not advertised, it didn't say anywhere in the advert about it being an Atari APB cabinet. Again, it's one of those ones where you see the picture, you look at it and you go, that's an Atari APB. So I thought, okay, well, um, you know, again, a really good price on this. Um, yeah, no, it's super good, but, 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 but good. And it was a working Sega Rally, and I hadn't played a lot of Sega Rally. I sort of remember it a little bit back in the day. And um, I thought, well, that that'll be pretty fun, and maybe I can, you know, play that for a while, and then later on look at my mission of doing the interchangeable ch panels, control panels. So that was that was my th thought process, guys. So I went and did the pickup. Guy that I bought it off, super nice. Um, nothing very eventful in terms of the, the the pickup. You know, we tested it all out. It was all all sweet. And then we, yeah, got it, got it home. And you know, one thing about these APB cabinets, which is quite unique, um, being a stand-up, you know, driving cabinet. Well, a couple of things actually. Obviously, the the bar key area has got this sort of, you know, quite unique circular design. And then we have this the seat, this little ride-on seat. And often the seats are missing. So, and and the weird thing is, is that in the advert there was no seat. 
<laughs> a seat. He didn't say that there was a seat. So when I got there, it was a surprise that that was included. So I, that, was, that was a bonus because, yeah, they're, they're always missing. And that seat is actually really cool because, you know, I'd hate to really sort of be standing there driving. It's great to just sit back on that. It takes up no room at all. So it's unlike, you know, a big sort of sit down cockpit. So it's really compact. And yeah, I, I was I was really pleased with it. So we got it all set up and uh, and it was working. But it does possess a monitor issue. And I'm not sure if the guy knew about this or not, because it's a little bit intermittent. But occasionally uh, the monitor will lose its color and um, it sort of loses its whites and it shows scan lines. And I thought it might have been overdriven at first because it was it was it was turned up quite a lot um, the flyback so I'd actually turn that back because someone else was mentioning about a similar sort of effect and the flyback being up too high so I have pulled it back it seems to have helped it but it, it hasn't fixed it so we'll see in this video if it starts happening or not I, I, I thought it was like happening when it was warming up and stuff but I'm not so sure if that's the pattern regardless it's a chassis going off to JMAC to get fixed at some point so we'll, we'll, we'll get that done so yeah we'll, sh we'll, we'll show you that um, as well but um, yeah got it home and um, had a look at it and of course there was quite a few things there guys that then suddenly sort of dawned on me so we'll talk about that in a minute but perhaps first of all let's look at the original game let's look at APB uh, as a game in itself and and have a chat about that because I never I never really played APB back in the day um, it wasn't I didn't think it was really a game that was even in the arcades where where I grew up so I didn't really see it until much later really into the emulation uh, scene we've had a chance to play it so we'll have a crack on it here and let's have a little chat about it i haven't got of course the 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 proper controls on the main box here um but it's just a 360 steering wheel and a couple of buttons so i'm just going to use we'll take this um we'll take this uh, rotary dial off here off the spinner and i'll get my little my little steering wheel we'll set that up on there let's have a game right so here we go and the first thing to note uh, guys, this had some pretty cool, cool artwork, <laughs> which is nicely uh, recreated here in the main emulation box. So that that side of it was uh, was pretty nice. Also, the the monitor was a medium res monitor, unlike a lot of the the other games which were normal res at the time. So that was a unique aspect as well to have that medium res and the high, you know effectively a high resolution. So let's start the game. And we need to start a day. Oh, I should really start on one, which is probably the easiest. Oh, I've got some sensitivity issues here on the wheel. Might have to change that. Let's see. And oh, turn that down a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> so accelerate. Where are we going here? Oh, it's just. Oh, that's right. Uh, okay. So <laughs> I was supposed to be doing the little test thing here, by the looks of it and that's it so i've got a this is a bit sort of unique thing about these controls too is that the little crosshair sort of spins away from you as you accelerate and then you need to and as it moves away then you press the siren button to do the arresting <laughs> so it's actually quite cool that first little step to do that because if you just get into the game it's actually quite confusing you really have to play this a few times and I haven't played it a lot at all um, which you know it doesn't immediately to me grab me as a great game and I know a lot of people think it well have, have said that it's a great game and I gather um, they they say that because you know they're, they're good at it so I've got to get these guys there you go and, uh, and also I've got to find these, um, these special bandits, but they're, I, I believe they're on the later levels. In the meantime, we've got to do some rather uh, laborious policing by pulling over people that are littering in the stage. Um, so just yeah, doing that. So yeah, it's got sort of um, interesting controls. I guess I, I, I could get used to it. Um, there's a donut break. Where am I? Where's the donut factory thing? 
Oh, I'm out of time. Okay. <laughs> L- lousy cop. Probably lousy demonstration as well here, guys. I don't. Uh, I don't know this guy- game very well. But listen, if you like this game, you know, let me know. Is it a game that requires you know quite a bit of time to play before you really get into it? Um, is it a game that really has sort of nostalgic value more than sort of replayability these days? Um, you know, I don't know. Is it just just me? I, I just don't find this incredibly exciting. <laughs> but uh, you know, there's a bit of a bit of skill, I guess, involved in doing it. And as I said, it's not sort of immediately apparent the, the way the controls work. Um, and probably put a lot of people off. Oh, well, I got the quote at that time, so... <laughs> I like the guy going... It's like the Simpsons. <laughs> okay. Day three, quota. And did that say little little bugs is that one of the guys I've got a catcher the main guys because there's a gun button as well and I haven't even played it enough guys to even use that gun button but that's when you get the special guy I believe you got to shoot him off the road and I'm fired again nice little um, animation there you get fired and chucked into a trash can that's nice isn't it <laughs> nice way to be fired so yeah guys that's that, that's the game and you know I as I said, I, I'm I'm not overly <laughs> keen on it as such. So would I, you know, put it in my APV machine? Um, well, let's have a chat about that because we have a couple of other issues with this cabinet. So let's have a look at it now. So here's the cabinet, and as you can see, here's that funky little seat attachment. How cool is that? And we have the uh, accelerator tucked away in there, no brake. And the main cabinet here, you see this uh, sort of half circle marquee area. We have the speakers underneath. So this is a, you know, part of the System 2 design, although all the cabs are, are different across those System 2 games. But the control panel itself should be the same dimensions and should be able to be swapped out. now. Clearly this isn't an original Atari control panel of the System 2 game, so this is a, a replacement. So the first thing I need to say right now, which you may or may not have already guessed, is that this is an LAI version of the APB. It is not an original Atari APB cabinet. And the first thing that would give that away is the fact that the cabinet is grey and you'll see that the original APB is black. There's also some subtle differences with the seat and the, uh, the graphics that were on the side. And you can sort of see here, it had APB on there, slightly different graphics. Uh, so there are some subtle differences. So when World Rally was put in there, I don't know if this was uh, a kit Obviously the game board has changed over. The original APB boards are not in there. And then this was of course added and it's got a, a high-low shifter on the other side there. And a missing, missing button on the steering wheel, but those aren't used anyway. Okay guys, so when I got it home, the first thing, well, well actually when I picked it up, the first thing, actually did I notice when I picked it up? Yeah, I think I did actually. And the first thing was, I thought in the picture that someone had stuck on World Rally up here, you know, over the top of the APP marquee, and I was going to be able to take that off. But no, they have cut. Look, they have cut it out. Can you believe that? Cut the original marquee and then stuck the yellow paper in behind with World Rally. So that was an immediate disappointment because I thought, you know, it'd be nice to get this cabinet back to looking, you know, like a, a APB machine. Even if I'm going to put different games in it, you know, I still wanted to make it look original if I could. I thought that'd be a quick way of getting that marquee back, but no. Now the second thing is, is the artwork. 
And you can see the artwork has been completely cleaned off the machine. Two reasons. One, it was slightly, you know, it was a bit damaged. Um, not, you know, not terrible, but yeah, it was damaged enough. The second thing though is, I really don't like that artwork. <laughs> it's I find it a bit sort of freaky. I don't know. I mean, it's it's a cool cool effect having the you know the officer sitting there like a like it's the car window. I sort of get that, and and that's pretty cool. And I guess you know I should appreciate it for the time um, you know period that it was it was made in. But I don't know. It just freaks me out. So I uh, I decided that I remove it. And the other thing is it doesn't look very good on the grey. It really doesn't. I mean, it's supposed to be on a cabinet that's black, and it, black cabinets just seem to look a lot, lot better, you know, with that included artwork. So anyway, artwork came off. You know, it can always be put back on. That's no biggie. So then I looked at this cab, guys, and I thought, well, what the, what am I going to do with it? <laughs> because, you know, how far do I take it to get it back to its roots of being an APB? And, um. I thought, well, you know, it would be cool to get the real control panel. And I can just see that monitor's just starting to flicker too, by the way. Um, let's see if it's going to go off or not. We'll see. But yeah, I thought I'd get the original control panel uh, and at least have that because, you know, as I said, my intention would be to swap in the control panels and swap games. So I ordered one from the United States on eBay and it came across and... You know, it was quite expensive really to get that across given the size and the weight of it but I got it across and lo and behold it arrived completely broken because it was stuck in a big bag and tumbled around like a washing machine and the whole steering assembly was busted because th there, there's a plastic piece on here which is really a bit of a design fault and it's the same thing on the championship sprints and they, they, they just break um, they're always you always find them broken so sure enough it arrived completely busted up so anyway they they were good enough to um, refund me a portion of that associated to the breakers because really it shouldn't have been packed like that it should have been packed a, a, a lot better to be to be fair and uh, and then at the moment I've actually super glued it back together just uh, just for the sake of um, of sort of getting it getting it working while I find a source of replacement part but here's the problem guys can you believe my my amazement when i went to put the uh control panel up against the uh, machine and found that the control panel is too big how can it be too big <laughs> this is supposed to be an abb cabinet it looks like an abb cabinet <laughs> how can this not fit and the second thing is, is that the front of the um, control panel doesn't seem to be the same as the front of this, this particular control panel in terms of the way that it is fitted. So, yes, it's completely different, which means that LAI must have made the cabinet one centimetre shorter in width. And to suit, they would have had to make their own custom control panels. Um, to fit it <laughs> so I don't know why I don't know why they've they've made that decision uh, back in the day and I did ask on Aussie Arcade forums if anyone else has actually seen an original with the original uh, control panel on it because I was just curious to see you know is, is it the same thing with just the one centimeter shorter but I've got no response like no one seems to have seen this cabinet or has this cabinet uh, in Australia, well at least you know the people that, that frequent the forum, so that's been up for a while now that uh, comment and I've had absolutely zero response, so how curious but what a pain in the neck because now I have this control panel which I can't use. So herein lies the conundrum guys, what am I going to do with this cabinet because if you think about it there's actually a whole raft of things, if I actually wanted to get this back to an APB what would I need to do, well first of all I'd have to get a new marquee, that one is stuffed, the second thing is is behind that marquee someone just installed a fixed light bulb, a standard uh, household light bulb and um, yeah that's a bit dodgy so behind there's supposed to be two flasher units 
um, and I'm not sure exactly the type of flash units, but there's one for either side because the game actually triggers, the actual APB game triggers the, the siren and is part of the effect of the cab, which I also I thought would be a pretty cool thing. All that circuitry specific to that uh, flashing mechanism is not there, which is separate to the board, I believe, the APB board. Now, of course, the APB board is not there. Inside the cabinet, there is the APB instruction sheet on the side. Great, <laughs> that's there. Um, but I have no board set. Um, I would need a marquee, I'd need the flashy unit. The monitor is uh, standard res in here at the moment. And of course, we would need a medium res monitor. It would also need to be rotated. And I believe the original fitment's there to be able to rotate it. So that probably wouldn't be a huge deal, but I would actually need to get a medium res, res monitor. You saw the graphics on the main box around the bezel. Those would need to be sourced. A whole bezel would need to be sourced. And then, of course, we have the joy of the controls, which I would either need to hack the controls I've just bought, which would seem like a, I don't know, A, expensive and probably, you know, damaging original equipment. I'm not keen on that either. Or I try and source the original APB and no one seems to have even heard or seen this cabinet. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm stuck with this in its bit of a sorry state at the moment, a bit of a bitzer. Now, I guess having said all that, the cabinet itself is actually a pretty cool cabinet. I actually actually pretty pretty much like it. And the thought did cross my mind, guys, and please don't don't go crazy at me, okay? Don't go crazy, because I was gonna try and do it and see if I could be reversible or not. But the thought across my mind, if I made this like a multi-driving cab then you know what this would be awesome to replace with a dynamic marquee to to actually change and then have something more generic like you know one of those latest games type thing up in the in the box up here i don't know guys that could be a bit of a frankenstein uh, cabinet could be couldn't it and there's probably better cabinets maybe maybe i could use for a multi-driver you know for things like pole position and outrun and that sort of thing you know, I teaked around a little bit with fancy designs. I looked at the pole position two side art and thought, you know, how would that look, you know, down the side on here. But really, guys, mm, I'm, I'm almost of the opinion that if someone really loved APB, you know, maybe it would be better going to them and for them to, you know, spend that time sourcing all those pieces to get it back. But it's not going to be cheap. And that's the other thing, you know, I could go through that process and get it all back together with all those parts, but it's, that's going to be hugely expensive. And there's no way I'd get anywhere near that money back um, when reselling the cab, when, you know, thinking about the original purchase price as well. So it doesn't seem to make sense for me to even go down that road and convert it and then sell it. So, yeah, decisions, guys, decisions. Good old LAI throwing a big spanner in the works yet again every time I pick up a cab of theirs, their design. It's, something is rather odd with it. So, yeah, I'm not decided yet. I'm still thinking about it. And, and frankly, the machine has pretty much stayed as it was other than me removing the side art since I picked it up. So, and that's really because I just can't decide what to do with it. So... Let's have a look. Um, let's have a look at the game. Let's have a crack at old World Rally here, so you can at least see the game that's in here. Okay, World Rally by Jolico. Let's give it a crack. Set up on free play. I've got easy, medium, expert, and hard. We'll start on easy. You progress your way through as you uh, as you make it through. And it's a sort of like you know pseudo 3D type uh, arrangement and you get a bit of a technique with the uh, with the wheel initially when you first play it you end up smacking the wheel against the uh, the hard stops that are on it <laughs> and this of course isn't a this is a 270 degree wheel so it's not a 360 like you know the original APB is anyway so it does have hard stops if you go straight to the side 
The interesting thing about this game is that those little arrows that come up to show you what's happening on the road, they sort of subtly change, so they're not like exactly the the same time in terms of the uh, the warning to when the corner occurs. So it's, it can certainly catch you out when you're a new player. Had to get there within 60 seconds. Got that quite easily in 47. And. Uh, and now we're on to stage two. So yeah, look, you know, the graphics are colourful. Oops, I need to be in low. Once you're in uh, high gear, by the way, it's pretty much uh, you stay in that. Although I think the snow stage, I tend to hop in and out of low and high gear. These early stages, though, pretty much just staying high once you get your speed up. Whoops, okay, so here we go guys, here's the screen debacle, and the, you can see that happened actually when I just touched the, see the, see the, hit the stops, so it's almost like one of these, you know, bang, bang the machine, which I really probably shouldn't do, uh, so there's obviously something loose there, dry solder joint or something that's causing that, but I can't see anything now, so... <laughs> Uh, oh well, it's a good demo of the game and a good demo of the monitor problem that I've got. Um, as I say, I just got to get the chassis in. In fact, this has just reminded me now I really need to get this done because it just can't really be played if this is going to happen randomly all the time. So anyway, guys, let's uh, let's leave it at that for the World Rally. It's a pretty cool game. It's fun. Uh, people hop on it and they seem to like it. And uh, and which is why, you know, again, I'm sort of not sure. Maybe I could just leave it like this with the uh, World Rally and, and it would be fine. Maybe that's all I need to do. But I just feel like, you know, this was going to be something so much more with interchangeable, you know, system one, system put two panels. A nice little seat. You could even, you know, sit here and play some of those other games uh, in this cabinet. So there you have it guys, that was the APB, well what's left of it. <laughs> what am I going to do? What am I going to do with that cabinet? Ah, uh, such a quandary. Should I convert it? Hmm, should I leave it as is? Should I replace it? I'm no clearer, no closer to a solution. <laughs> but I will get that monitor fixed, get that chassis fixed at least. Um, yeah, it can be played like that as a world rally uh, in the meantime and it's still, it's still a, a lot of fun again you know not keen not sold on the APB would have been nice to do this whole interchangeable control panel thing it's not to be by the looks of it although I have to make custom panels to do that that sort of defeats the purpose of it so yeah I'm not sure I'm 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 not sure so anyway guys I am going to get back to the Sega Blast and you know even today you know before thinking about doing this video I thought you know there's just one there's actually about three but I think there's like one screw I thought I could just get off and then the whole thing would or the bottom part of it would come apart but that's not the case um, and the amount of time it has taken me to just hack and chisel and get these last uh, screws that are stuck. My God, oh, seriously, I just, I don't want to do, I don't want to do that again. If I ever get another blast, I'm not dismantling it, guys. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going down that route. Unless I get, I, I have to actually get some JIS screwdrivers, um, proper torque set. It's the only way I would take that job on again, because... Yeah, this 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 is almost this has almost defeated me. <laughs> it's been several several times I've been lying on a heap on the floor and sweat, just thinking, no, <laughs> why? You know, why did they put them in so tight in the first place? Why did they use like steel that's harder than diamond? I mean, except the screw heads aren't bloody tough. Those things just rip straight up. The rest of the screw is yeah made of the hardest known substance to man it seems anyway i will i'm i'm not going to be beaten i'm going to get that thing apart finish that video and mark my words that video is going to be up at the end of this week <laughs> otherwise you will see a very very defeated man by the end of the week if that's if it's not so guys i hope you enjoyed this little video in between we've got christmas coming up soon am i going to stop making videos over christmas like a lot of people seem to be doing 
probably not. I'm probably going to carry on uh, and get things done. I really, I, you know, my main goal at the moment is just to get these final machines up and working so that we can, you know, sit and just enjoy the arcade for a little bit. You know, I've made some progress on the um, the Hyper Olympic, uh, but I again need to do the reassembling of all that and and do the the uh, the video for it. So that'll be coming up as well. Uh, but once that's done, once the blast is done, sort out the chassis on the APB, probably won't be done before Christmas, but once that's done, then I'll sort of really have everything working in here. Oh, then the missile command. <laughs> I've, got, I've got to do that as well, but I have the parts for that. So uh, they've arrived. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of ready to just get it sorted and then just sit and, and relax for a bit, guys. You know, this is the thing. People, you know, once people come in here and it's all sorted out and done and dusted, you know, I'm sure they'll just think, hey, yeah, nice machines, you know, just roll them in, they work, off you go, you know. This hobby takes a serious amount of time, a serious amount of time. If you don't, you know, if you haven't got the, that sort of time to dedicate to arcade machines, then don't buy them because, of that, you know. Still been having lots of little issues go on and Damn Windows 10, I tell you, it's not the ideal operating system to have your machines emulated on. You know, my old, uh, my, my clone Sega Blast over there sitting on Windows 2000, you know, the, the China, well, originally it was on the original 2000, of course it's on XP now, not network connected. And that thing just hums along because it's not getting updates and all the rest of it. And I could probably pull the pin on these in terms of updates. That, that might be a way of doing it, um, you know, just disconnect them from the internet. But to, from time to time when I want to do updates, I want to get stuff from the internet on the machine. I don't want to have to keep porting things across onto USB sticks when I can, you know, just copy stuff across on the network. Um, but as soon as updates hits, hits these machines, guys, I just end up having huge problems. And even, you know, you'd be playing a game and I'm sure I've got this set so that it, um, it warns you, but I think there was... Kind of like a, just a, uh, you know, not the typical blue screen, but it was a graphics type blue screen. It's not, you know, not the standard one while I was playing. And then it decided to reset and then it was doing updates. And, you know, when you're having people over, the worst, last thing you want to do is turn on your machine, especially if you haven't had them on for a while. And then it wants to, you know, do all these damn updates. That pinball machine, I fixed that DMD because the DMD stopped after the Windows 10 anniversary update, if you remember. And uh, yeah, that ended up being that the driver was unsigned for the um, the pin DMD. So Windows 10 Anniversary Edition decided that, no, not going to run that anymore. And that took about an hour and a half to solve. It should have been, again, again an easy thing, but going into the available drivers, there was like seven or eight, all of the same name. It was all very confusing. In the end, actually, I don't even know the steps that I took to finally choose the right driver. <laughs> but it's now working, so I'm like, that's it. I'm not touching it. Um, duh. You know, that, that stuff is it, just crazy the amount of time it takes to keep these running. But look, it is all worth it. When we get to sit down and play and have fun and have people over and they can enjoy these games, that's, that's what makes it all worth it for me. Um, I just love, I love seeing people have fun. You know, it's not, not definitely not just for me in here. Um, the more people that can, you know, of family and friends that can, you know, use it, experience it, the better. Okay, guys, well, enough of me rambling on. Uh, again, if you like this video and want to see more of this stuff, please hit the like button and please subscribe. That'll be great to see you again. Thanks to you guys, too, the, the original subscribers. So we're, we're a little, tiny little YouTube channel. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to get much bigger. I don't know. Um, 27, 28 odd subscribers at the moment, but hey, Thanks for hanging in there. I'm, hopefully I'm doing stuff that, that you like to see. And, uh, you know, stick, stick with it and hope you enjoy it. And, uh, you know, good luck with your, the stuff that you're doing. I hope I'm helping in some way with your own arcades. As I said, that's one of my uh, objectives is to share what I'm doing. So hopefully it does help others. So, you know, why not? Um, so thank you very much, early subscribers. You're not forgotten. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. And it better damn well be the pulling apart of the blast. <laughs> it better be. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's it from me. You know the drill. Ciao for now. You must continue. You can do it. You are amazing. The theater is now closed.